Good morning, Grace Covenant. It's good to be back with you after several weeks of parental leave. I've been thinking a lot about this time that we're in. As many of you know, um, our daughter was born just six weeks ago. And I've been spending a lot of time in this chair right here. This is the chair in our, in our nursery, rocking our daughter to sleep. It's amazing how the body you remembers. This brought me back to all those late nights with our first child, rocking him to sleep. Back when he was born, we were at a kind of a crossroads in our lives, me and my spouse. I was, um, I was finishing up my degree. I was going on the job market. At the time, I wasn't quite sure exactly where God was calling me. And it was a tough time. Um, we didn't know where we were going and it was a time when, when jobs were pretty scarce. And I remember a lot of those nights as I was rocking our first child, just feeling really anxious about, about what was gonna happen. Sometimes I, I rocked and I worried for just hours. And it's made me think about our present time, the weight of our present time. Here I am again, rocking and worrying with our new child. And there's a part of me that's tempted to just kind of, much as it was back when I was rocking our first child many years ago, I'm tempted to try to escape in my thoughts, to try to wish away the present time. You know, we start hearing about vaccine trials starting and maybe something happening in the beginning of next year. Uh, we have a really difficult election looming in less than 100 days. We're anxious to hear the results of that. It's very easy not to live in the present time for me. I'm very much so tempted to wish these months away. I wonder if you're feeling that as well. I know that these are difficult times for so many of us. Worries about our jobs, worries about our, our bodies and our family's health, worries about school and our, our kids. It's so easy for these worries to just kind of, to just choke out any type of meaning in the present time. I guess that's my charge for, for myself and my invitation for you all today is in the midst of so much weight upon us, how can we also live in the present moment? How can we also breathe? How can we also pray? and listen to what God is telling us, what God is charging us to do. Not six months from now, not 12 months from now, but, but right now. And in, even in the midst of so much hard things happening, what is God telling us to cherish about this moment as well? What beauty is around us? In what ways is the Spirit feeding us? I want to end our devotion with a passage that spoke to me this morning. This is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 32 through 37. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, 
keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. What is God asking us to keep awake to today? Where is the, sp is the Spirit moving? in our lives, and in our community, and in our nation. Remember, in the midst of these days, to stay awake. To stay awake to today, to this moment, to the Holy Spirit that speaks to us every day. Let's take a couple of breaths together. Grace Covenant, you are in our hearts, you are in our prayers.